The Supreme Court is asking whether the U.S. should permit a Guantanamo Bay prisoner to testify about his alleged torture by the CIA. It came at the end of oral arguments related to a 2017 petition by Abu Zubaydah. He sought subpoenas for two ex-CIA contractors as part of an investigation by Polish authorities. He was detained in Pakistan in 2002 as CIA agents tried to gather counterterrorism intelligence following following the September 11th attacks. Court documents reveal he was repeatedly waterboarded, locked in a coffin-sized box, and denied sleep for extended periods of time. The U.S. government has sought to block his request for information about his confinement, arguing it is a state secret. CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge joins me now with more. Uh, welcome, Catherine. It's good to see you again. You know, Abu Zubaydah is a name that I haven't heard in a long time. That's Remind right. our viewers, who is Abu Zubaydah and how does Poland factor into this investigation? Elaine, Abu Zubaydah was captured in 2002, and at that time, then-President Bush described him as a chief of operations for al-Qaeda, so someone who was recruiting, planning, and training for terrorist attacks against the United States. This was later disputed at very senior levels within the intelligence community. After he was captured, he went into what's called the CIA Enhanced Interrogation Program that was carried out at these secret prisons or black sites. And what we know now is that Zubeda was held in a black site in Poland, and that is where Polish investigators come in, because there's ongoing litigation to understand who on the ground in Poland was supporting the operation of the CIA secret prison there. Well, the U.S. has already declassified a substantial amount of information regarding the CIA's treatment of Zubeda. What is the U.S. government's argument against authorizing subpoenas for the CIA contractors? Well, first of all, I think we've got to understand this concept of state secrets. The government argues that something is a state secret when they feel the public release of that information would have a nev negative impact on national security. In this case, they're using a somewhat, I'll call it, unique legal argument that, while there's a lot of information already in the public square about Abu Zubaydah. They say if you bring in people with firsthand knowledge of his treatment, in this case the principal architects of the interrogation program, they will be confirming or denying what's already in the public record, and they feel this would be a violation of what they still consider to be highly classified information about this program, Elaine. Well, Catherine, what were some of the questions that justices mm -hmm. raised during oral arguments, and when might the court reach a decision? Well, I don't want to speculate on when they might reach a decision, but I will say that I was kind of blown away by a line of questioning from Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch, because he seemed to find a way around this question of the state secrets privilege, which so many courts have had deference to the government and to the intelligence community. He suggested that Abu Zubaydah mm -hmm. should be brought in as a witness to testify about his own treatment, because that would not involve government mm -hmm. secrets. It would be a firsthand account of his experience within the CIA program. This really, in some ways, mm -hmm. is, is revelatory, because the issue that you know from following this that has held up the prosecution mm -hmm. of 9-11 suspects has been the secrecy about their detention and interrogation in that CIA program. So this is the first time I've seen almost a potential legal resolution to the issue of secrecy surrounding the program and bringing in the detainees themselves to testify about their experience. That really is remarkable to think mm -hmm. about that prospect, Catherine, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially coming from Justice Gorsuch. Um, so there's been a push to close the U.S. military's Correct. detention center at mm -hmm. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, for several years. Is there any movement, Catherine, by the Biden administration on this? Well, the Biden administration here in Washington has talked about its desire to close down the camps at the Guantanamo Bay Navy base. That's completely separate from the naval and intelligence operations that go on there. 
But to me, this is a classic case of the disconnect between Washington and what's happening on the ground. I was just in Guantanamo Bay, and at Camp Justice, which is the military court complex, there's a $15 million construction project going on where they're building a second courthouse for the overflow mm. in the anticipated prosecution of these cases. So certainly down at Guantanamo Bay, with the detentions and with the prosecution of these detainees, they're operating like it's a full-gown prospect that it's going to happen, like they're going full hmm. steam ahead. Yet here in Washington, they're talking about closing down that element of the operation in Guantanamo Bay. That's why it always pays to be on the ground, to see what's happening for yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing like seeing it for yourself and bearing Correct. witness to what the government <laughs> is actually doing. Um, Catherine Herridge, we so appreciate your reporting, as always. Thank you very much. You're welcome.